War II, superpowers have dominated international politics. This is a series of short films examining what the very building blocks of these global powers actually are. to forget, but Britain once ruled the biggest empire in human history. At its peak in the 19th century, it covered over a quarter of the planet. But all empires fall into dust, and by the late 1940s, this one was declining fast. Still, let's be positive. These days, we've still got a few post-imperial trinkets. Gibraltar, Pitcairn, Montserrat, the good old South Sandwich Islands, and Sweet Rock All. The world's last old-fashioned empire fell at the end of the 1980s, when the Soviet Union let go of its satellite states in Eastern Europe. In the 21st century, the world's big players tend to wield political power in slightly subtler ways. These days, the global game is not about empire, but spheres of influence, clever diplomacy, foreign aid, international institutions, and the use of what's known as soft power. Having said that, Behind the more enlightened exterior, you can see that some of the old imperial rules still apply. It barely needs mentioning that using military force and occupation to shape the world to your designs is an idea that often looks just as fashionable as it was a couple of centuries ago. With some resources seemingly scarcer than ever, the world's big powers are still tussling over overseas territories, particularly the ones that are rich in oil. All told, if you're going to be a superpower, you need to pull strings all over the world. Predictably, the USA is by far the best example. The end of the Cold War may have led it to withdraw most of its troops from Europe, but give or take the odd fallout, it still puts a premium on keeping Europe on side and maintaining its crucial relationship with the UK. In the Middle East, it gives strong backing to Israel and keeps things sweet with oil-rich Saudi Arabia. In South America, it seems to stick to the Cold War script, fretting about such left-wing leaders as Venezuela's Hugo Chavez and Evo Morales, while supporting such figures as Colombia's president, Alvaro Uribe. In terms of global influence, China is increasingly looking just as busy, particularly in Africa. Last year, President Hu Jintao went on a 12-day tour of the continent, and when Steven Spielberg pulled out of the Beijing Olympics in protest at China's lack of action on human rights in Darfur, it spoke volumes about how global power politics has changed. India is coming up fast. The enlargement of the European Union into Eastern Europe hugely increased its diplomatic clout, and if it expands to take in Turkey, it'll have an unprecedented foothold in the Muslim world. Understandably, India thinks it's time it was included. Earlier this year, Gordon Brown announced that they had his support. In fact, Britain is now lobbying for a big extension of permanent members that would include not just India, but Germany, Japan, Brazil, and one African country, which perhaps begs one unwelcome question. 60 years after the sunset on the British Empire, why are we still on there? But that's another story. 